All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined from the future down in Australia in Melbourne by Tristan Gray. I never get tired of that joke. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, John. Yeah. I, I won't ask you for the lottery numbers, which I normally do as well, because that's a bit <laughs> joke, a bit old as well. And uh, Tristan, along with Aaron, um, their entrepreneurial spirit ignited after a challenging start with the music festival at 19, uh, which resulted in financial loss. The setback, however, laid the foundation for their remarkable venture into digital marketing world with no BS marketplace, turning adversity into advantage. They transformed their experiences into a driving force for their success. Now, No BS Marketplace has evolved into a leading digital marketing agency boasting a seven-figure revenue and a global team of 80 staff. And that is very, very impressive. So congratulations on that. Uh, and what we're going to talk about today is, is, I mean, let's talk a little bit about uh, technology and marketing, tech stacks, and 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 uh, and digital marketing, and that, and you know AI, and how all of these things are playing, and and how you should you know how you should develop the best mix for yourself, or how you should identify, you know, the best mix for yourself. But just uh, just I'm fascinated. Just give me give me uh, give me the little backstory on the on the music festival before we. Before we get into it, ah, uh, just two young Aussie blokes that uh, were very into music and thought that we were invincible. Um, and we were only nineteen and twenty-one at the time, and I don't know how on earth we managed to pull off a festival uh, and get you know all these bands. And oh, it was it was incredible experience. Um, who was, who was but, the headliner? Um, uh, Jebediah and the Panics. So we were like a, an all Australian uh, oh, lineup okay. that we had going on. So. Um, yeah, it's the music industry is very, um, corrupt, <laughs> uh, and, uh, and it's a shame because like there's, there's even here in Australia, there's practically no music festivals left anymore. Oh, um, oh. but, uh, but yeah, it was a big learning experience at a very young age. Well, maybe you need to take a second run at it now. You've got the experience. <laughs> no, now, now that I have the experience, I know that that is not a good business model. <laughs> Excellent. Anyway, so talk about talk to me a little bit about uh, you know how, what No BS Marketplace is and how you how you set it up and what 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 did you learn from that experience that actually helped you to establish this? Yeah, sure. So um, No BS Marketplace, we're a wholesale SEO provider. So what we've done is we we productize um, SEO for digital marketing agencies and marketing teams. So. Uh, I say wholesale because most of our clients are reselling our services to their mm -hmm. clients. Right. Uh, and it was really born from us solving our own problem. So um, Aaron and I, we had multiple businesses after the music festival. And one of the biggest challenges was always understanding digital marketing and building websites. Uh, and so we started our own digital agency. And, um, you know, after a few years of local networking and taking on some small clients, one of our biggest problems was, uh, link building and being able to to scale our SEO. So uh, we built our own technology to be able to manage the process. And then we started selling to other agencies. And here we are eight years later. Um, yeah. So one of the, one of the, um, you know, big issues now, obviously with SEO is SEO has always been, it's been kind of, it's like spinning plates. I've always thought that it's a bit like spinning plates, right? Because you know, you're always going fixing stuff. You're always reacting to, you know, changes in algorithms and all of this kind of thing. Um, can you today, looking at looking at the state of SEO today, if somebody was just came to you and said, I, I need to start this, I've set up a business now, I need to get my SEO going, where would you start today? What are some of the first places you would start? Look, the thing with SEO is people get far too caught up in thinking they have to do all this crazy manipulation work to understand the Google algorithm. Um, you know, SEO is just part, just, it should just form part of any uh, decent marketing strategy. You know, you need to build a website that it clearly explains what it is that you do. You need to, to build content that resonates with your audience. You need to go out and, and network and co-collaborate on content with other people within your industry. 
Um, you know, these are all this, these are all the things that are the backbone of SEO. The problem is that most people, especially in the past, don't want to do that or can't afford to do that. So then they bring in a, a so-called SEO expert and then they manipulate the process to make it seem like you're doing all that. So really, if someone's going to go out today and do that, forget all the jargon, you know, forget all this stuff that's coming out with the, the algo changes and AI and all that. Like you just need to put the customer first. You know, you need, you need good quality content. You need to have a good, unique selling proposition um, and just go out there and, and build brand. Yeah, and and on the note, on the point of good quality content, I guess that's that's one of the areas that I feel uh, that there are some challenges in. Uh, number one is like, uh, you know, everybody's a content creator today, right? I always wonder if everybody's creating content who's actually consuming it. But uh, so, and now obviously, you know, I'm bringing AI into it. Now AI can create content, and so people are using that, even though, and so. My my fear is that we're getting a lot of garbage or superficial or crap content just being pushed out there. So I guess you can look at it one or two ways. You can say, oh, well, you know, the whole thing is just getting diluted. Or you can say, if I put the effort in to produce really good, high quality, well thought out, intentional, targeted content, I'll win. Mm. And, and look, you're absolutely right, John. There is so much trash and we can produce content at an alarming rate now. Um, and it's very hard to detect because the AI tools mm -hmm. are so good at producing content. And you've got all these um, all these tools that are available that are telling you that it's AI this or it's AI that. And I'm like, mm -hmm. that, they don't actually know. Google doesn't even know what's right. AI content. Um, but you know, I, I agree in that you, you need to be creating high quality content. You know, you, it's part of that is building uh, topical authority for your website so making sure that the content you're producing is super relevant to you and that you're creating content in an intentional way not just creating content for the sake of creating it um mm -hmm. you know the, for years i've heard people say i need to write a blog a week and then <laughs> they just send some, some random blog onto their website but you know like there's there should be a lot of intent behind that and then what's the what how are you going to distribute that content um and and just writing a 700 word blog i mean gosh anyone can do that I mean, this is why we do podcasts and videos and, you know, and, you know, this, this well thought through content is what we need where we're doing white papers and studies and, mm -hmm. um, you know, give, giving out templates and actually adding value to the audience. Like, you know, chat GPT can't do a lot of stuff. Like yeah. it can help, it can help speed up the process, but it can't, it can't write anything very well. No, and and obviously AI doesn't deal with nuance, or it doesn't really deal with um, with the human. We say the human element, the things that we can inject into content that AI is never going to be able because it comes out of our crazy, scrambled, irrational minds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And look, I'm, I've tried. I, I try a lot using AI, and like I still use ChatGPT to help clean up emails. I even use it with some of the promotional stuff that we're rolling out just to help mm -hmm. me with grammar and spelling and just give me like a fresh look on things. But it still needs, you need to have like a basis there. Like yeah. it still needs to be your thoughts that you can sort of use AI to, to help clean up and, um, and push out. Mm -hmm. So I guess probably one of the biggest, uh, one of the f conversations you have with your customers, I know you said a lot of your customers are resellers, but is, is really them identifying their customer very well because I, I think people still do that today you know think they have a well-defined customer well-defined target customer but they might discover that actually when you look at it it's not that well-defined or it has evolved or you have multiple personas or whatever but you need to to revisit them so i guess before you start on any initiative and seo is a classic one is you really need to understand who you're targeting mm. Absolutely. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's not just, I mean, I think every business, I'll speak to so many people that mm -hmm. are just, they're just like, I'm like, oh, who's your target customer? Oh, you know, anyone in the Midwest. I'm like, yeah. okay. And they're like, oh yeah, you know, if they're over, you know, if they've got $2 to scratch together, then, you know, then I'll help them. You know, I'm like, nah. And like, I've, I've struggled with this personally over right. the years with our own business, you know, like trying to identify and just commit. And I think there's a bit of fear in that as well, like mm -hmm. the, the fear of missing out and going, well, if yeah. I'm just going to commit to to this one target audience, you know, what about all these other people that have money to give me that, you know, that yeah. I could potentially work with, you know? 
Well, we're, we're, I think, hard, hard, again, like humans, we're hardwired. We're terrible decision makers because we we know that the minute we make a choice or a decision that we're by default unchoosing other things and we like to have all, you know, keep our options open. But yeah, I mean, that's that's a classic one is like, who's your customer? Well, everyone's our customer. It's, but not, that's not true. And you know, it's not true because otherwise <laughs> you wouldn't need any help. <laughs> um, exactly. Yeah. So where do you, um, so give me what the future of SEO, do you see any major changes coming or do you think it's, it's going to, again, be just focusing on the fundamentals and making sure what, you, if you're doing whatever you're doing, that you're doing it properly, like with quality and intentionality. Yeah. So I think uh, a big part of it is going to be uh, quality over quantity. Uh, whereas in the past it's been, you know, we need to produce lots of content and we need to build lots of links and we need lots of pages and lots of traffic and lots of this and that. And, you know, it's, yeah, we, we talked before about how fast we can produce content. I'm like, mm -hmm. we don't need that. It's like, right. we need to scale, we need, we need to scale back the SEO component. You know, we look at the changes that Google's making and they're starting to, it's kind of like they've over-optimized the algorithm because now you know, there's so many things that you, you look up, you search online and you're just getting responses from Reddit. And these yeah. are like people that unqualified and half the time they're just, they're just poking fun at a particular topic. I mean, don't even get me started on this new generative search uh, right. shit that, that, that Google's rolled out. Like it's horrendous. Uh, and so, and I think Google are realizing that and they're starting to unwind some of the things that they've done and just going back to basics. Uh, and so, you know, what we're seeing with a lot of, a lot of our partners and a lot of the clients that we're working with is that less is more. Uh, mm -hmm. so, you know, a big part of our business, we, uh, we act like a, a broker for link building. Um, and we've got like a platform that does that. And what I'm seeing is that people are buying or well, they're, they're getting less links, but they're spending more money. Um, like the, the price per link that I've seen over the last two years has increased nearly 50%. Wow. Um, and that's partly because, you know, a lot of be before, I mean, gosh, 10 years ago, you could go out and you could buy a hundred links for $50. Mm -hmm. Um, but, but now like to get, to get the attention of a, a digital publisher that's willing to work for you. I mean, they want to be paid. They're trying to generate revenue for themselves. Yeah. Um, you know, and so, you know, you need to compensate them for their time. And in a lot of cases you're going to be spending two or $300, uh, just to get one link back to your website with a piece of content. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm, I'm seeing people that are spending four or five thousand dollars for a single link. Um, but you know, and, but it's it's this is the thing. It's like um, people. A lot of our clients are still spending the same amount of money per month. Mm -hmm. They're just doing less of it and getting right. better quality product. Yeah, and I, and I think that's the that's the key to it uh, is is being in, as you said like being selective and, and targeted and going for the high quality and then making sure that you're ready. I mean, before you start looking for backlinks, you should make sure that like if traffic is going to come your way, what experience are they going to have if the traffic comes from you know a a, a good high authority site? What are they going to think of if somebody comes through? What are they going to think of you? You have to think about their reaction, right? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's, 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 you're dealing with people like it's still, it's, it's a sales process. You know, you got to go out and, and pitch and talk and build relationships. And, you know, it's the things that so many people have forgotten how to do uh, mm -hmm. since working from home, especially uh, mm -hmm. just go out and, you know, build, build friendships and relationships and uh, add value. Yeah. I mean, even in your business, I mean, you, you know, uh, in what you do, I mean, how, how critical is the, is the human relationship piece with your, you know, with your customers and, and them with their customers? Because I think sometimes people are, get caught up in the technology, like we're a technology company, we have a CRM and everything, but we, at the end of the day, feel that there's a lot of things that people can do that, that technology can't do. And particularly around the relationship piece and building and that the part that people want, they want that connection they want that authenticity so how how important is that in your business oh, i think it's still incredibly important um you know in for our business in particular we spend we work with a lot of agencies and we spend time teaching and training them how to clearly communicate with their clients and build relationships mm -hmm. so i mean we're we're creating product for our clients who are then reselling it to their clients but they're coming to us with 
little to no knowledge sometimes on how SEO even works or how they're going to take what we've built and present that to the client. So, mm. I mean, I've, I've got a, I'm catching up with an agency owner later this morning where it's like, you know, he's, he's got no idea and he's stressing out. And I'm like, you know, I'm trying to teach him how to communicate with his clients. You know, like if you've got a new client that's come on board, what is the first 90 days is so, so mm. important. Uh, that's because if they're going to churn, they're generally going to churn in the first 90 days. And yeah. so you need to over deliver on everything that you're doing. Everything that we do, we need to clearly communicate that, make sure that they're involved, get excited about the changes that we're making. Like it's all part of building the relationship because then at least later down the track, if you do mess something up or the results aren't where they where they expect it to be, you've got a relationship to be able to smooth that over. Whereas if you're just, you know, sending them an email once a month, like as soon as you as soon as something doesn't look right. Like they they're just gonna piss you off and then and not pay you anymore. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I I absolutely absolutely agree with that, and I think that's that's something that people often overlook. I think is that idea of the motivation dip, right? Is that where you know you're highly motivated as a buyer, you're excited, you've been working closely, you know, you make the purchase, then you start to sort of question and like you know in the in the case that you were just talking about there maybe you question your own ability did i make the right decision am i able to do this all of that and as you said that's the time when you really need to be supported and there's nothing and that's why handoffs are so critical like if you've if you've been the salesperson and you developed this fantastic relationship and then you just hand it off to the deployment people and there's not an elegant handoff the person doesn't feel supported you know they're immediately that's your they're, then then you're at risk because now you've suddenly gone from being that great salesperson who you really enjoyed working with to oh yeah i get it uh, you've sold me i'm not that interesting anymore mm -hmm. yep absolutely i agree yeah. Yeah. Um, so what do you see as some of the um, some some opportunities or maybe underutilized opportunities out there that uh, that people could be looking at? Um, well, opportunities everywhere, John. I mean, did yeah. some somewhere is there a particular um, topic in particular? That you well, no, I just meant in on? terms of in terms of the work you do. I mean, are there are there underutilized techniques or strategies that you think people should pay more attention to? Um, look, a lot of what I've been talking about where it's like just going back to basics, uh, and just understanding marketing fundamentals. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, HubSpot's done a good job over the years, educating people about the buyer's journey. And I know it's not new, but they just put a new spin on it and make it sound fancy. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, like we, when we talk about the buyer's journey and educating buyers, um, and, you know, where are your buyers hanging out and, you know, where are they? It, like I was talking to, I was talking to my son the other day, and he's only thirteen. Uh, and I'm trying to explain to him, it's like, well, if someone's got this this problem and they don't know mm -hmm. how to solve it, then how are you going to get in front of them to help them help show like how you're going to solve their problems? Um, and it's, so it's just some of this basic marketing stuff that so many people just overlook. Like, I mean, you know, there's all this sales and marketing techniques that we've been we've been doing for you know decades and decades uh, that no one bothers to look at because we're too caught up in in the data and what's Google saying and what's ChatGPT saying. And I'm like, just forget all that. Like, there's just basic 101s. Like, how do you communicate with another human being? Like, yeah, it's not, it's not rocket science. It doesn't have to be that complex. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree with you, and you're right. I mean, we're trying to make it. We're trying to make it that complex, and uh, and 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 I say to people, but there's there's really good news for people because if you put effort into communicating like a normal human being, if you are if you are actually polite, if you put some thought into your communications and stuff, you're going to stand out which is a sad reflection on the world we live in today, but you will stand out, as I said, Tristan, by just doing some of the fundamentals, communicating with, peop with people as people, being polite, being whatever. Don't be, don't, the other thing that gets me is like, don't jump in and be over familiar and pitch it, whatever, from the get go. Yeah, be, be, you'll never, you'll, nobody will ever push back on you for being polite and for being maybe a little bit formal at the beginning, but asking permission and all of that kind of stuff. Nobody will ever criticize you for that, but they darn sure there's people who will for the opposite. Yep. Oh, a hundred percent. And I've seen it. And I mean, I'm not, I've never considered myself to be a particularly good salesman. 
And, you know, one of the things that someone explained to me years ago that I hadn't realized is that like I generally lead with a bit of vulnerability and, you know, being overly polite and, you know, and I'm not oversharing, but, you know, if, if someone wants my feedback or they want something, like I'll ask them first. I'm not just going to like, yeah, like I know digital marketing. I've been doing it for a very long time. I'm not going to turn up to someone and be like, I looked at your website. That's really terrible. <laughs> uh, right. It's like, well, yeah. you know, if they want, if they want feedback and be like, Hey, look, you know, if you'd like to have a chat about your strategy, you know, let me know. Like I'm more than happy to catch up and give you and just add some value like yeah. for free, like without expecting anything in return. Yeah. And I know you're right though. And it's amazing how many people still use that tactic. I mean, I get emails all the time where it says, you know, you're this sucks or that sucks or the other sucks and we can fix it for you. And you're always saying, it's not mm -hmm. the best way of approaching things, you know, because how do you know that's not, how do you know I didn't do all the work on that and you've just insulted me to my face. Whereas if you'd come at from the direction you're saying it, maybe I would have gone, oh, that's great. You've got some ways I can improve this. But if you start out of the gate, just saying, well, your baby's ugly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, hundred percent. Um, yeah, and I use the same, you know, with, with our account management team. I'm like, never ever give someone feedback on their website because, you know, what if, if they've just built it? And, you know, exactly, you know, you're telling them their baby's exactly. ugly. Like, that's yeah, not okay. Yeah. And there's a, you know, there's an awful, there's an element of subjectivity to it too, as well, you know, mm. taste and all that. Well, listen, yeah, Tristan, this has been fascinating. I know we could talk for a long more, but uh, we're bumping up against our time. So, all of Tristan's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and, no BS marketplace. So uh, we are a wholesale SEO marketplace. So uh, for people that are looking for some help with their SEO campaigns, uh, even if you've got one that's well underway, uh, you can come in to our marketplace. We can help you build a strategy. We can help with content. We can help with link building. Uh, and we don't necessarily ask. And in most cases, we don't ask you for a monthly retainer. You just buy the product that you need to help get you where you are. And so even though I'm based in Melbourne, 80% um, of our business is international. Uh, we've got a team in the, in the US, Canada, and the UK as well. So uh, if you need some, if you'd like some feedback on your SEO strategy, or you need some help, uh, you can, you can find us on the website or reach out to me on LinkedIn. Yeah, and I'd encourage you to go ahead and check it out because there is it is an area, as we said at the beginning, there's a lot of there's a lot of noise around SEO. So I would encourage you to go check it out from from people who can uh, give you the give you the lowdown and and get you right to what's important and get through all this fluffy noise. So thanks again, Tristan. Thank you for watching and listening. And I will see you all again very soon. Thank you. Yeah.